Welcome back to chapter 11, Managing Organizational Change, Resistance, and Conflict. And the fact is these concepts of change, resistance, and conflict don't just apply to being on a project team or managing or leading a project team. You know, they pretty much apply to life, you know, in the fact that, you know, change is something that comes with resistance. And in fact, when we have, you know, multiple people involved, can create conflict because remember we're all human we all have unique experiences and pasts that we bring into situations and this is not unique you know to outside of the workplace if you will so or in the workplace i should say so our learning objectives what we're going to look at here is organ organizational change management so how do we create a plan for change management and what i mean by that you know apply concepts create a plan with everything we need to have a plan we've talked about planning risk you know and with with risk comes the potential for conflict um, and any project is implementing change so when we talk about having a change management plan we're talking about literally establishing the guidelines for how we're going to get from point a through the project to point b and manage all that change in, in between okay so we'll describe how change can be viewed as a process we're going to look at the human aspect of it and of course this then takes us back to the idea of emotional intelligence which we'll also talk about how our degree of emotional intelligence will play into our ability to manage change to implement change to support change to accept change how it react how it um, impacts us right and then how we manage it as the leader of a project team now remember we're talking most about technology and projects relating to implementing technology but change affects everyone all the time even if technology isn't involved okay so keep that in mind so go ahead and pause look over these learning objectives let's just continue on so as we talk about introducing the idea of organizational change on the right here are reasons why we do it so first of all to increase our return on investment which means we're either increasing productivity uh, increasing value that we get decreasing cost of what it is that we do as a business to create more profit whatever that may be in that same sense is the idea of improving productivity through organizational change so how do we make it better faster cheaper whatever the case may be better quality greater efficiency reduced costs we've talked about employee satisfaction so again when we talk about implementing organizational change we need to remember the human asset and those are the folks that work for us that do the job on a daily basis how are how is this change how is this project going to implement them because a lot of times those are the workers okay those are the people that managers supervise and the manager may be into a system but most likely the majority of folks that are using our technology improvements our information technology systems and projects are the end user and so their impact has to be considered you know very highly because without it what you're going to see is they're not going to implement our system in the way we want um, they're not going to become supportive of it so project managers and then finally new opportunities you know whether it be within our business within a market share you know a new product new service whatever the case may be so when you are a project manager or a team member of a project you are essentially change agents or agents of change and what that means is that people are looking to you to figure out if they should support this change so another reason to have end users on the project team is because those end users go back to the other users that are going to be affected and saying look you know what i'm seeing what we're doing is going to make your life easier it's going to make things more efficient it's going to give you better data um, it's going to work faster. It's going to work more reliable. And I'll give you an example of that in a minute. So when implementing the deliverables from a project, it's easy to underestimate the impact of changes on processes. And of course, the way that's going to impact people. Remember that we are all creatures of habit. 
Let me give you an example outside of technology in a project. How many times have you driven home from your job, got home, and you couldn't even describe the path you took, the things you saw on that path because you were just in that zone, if you will. Well, the same thing happens when people get comfortable with systems, when they get comfortable with versions of software that they know how to use, and here comes a new user interface. And what I knew to do in the upper right-hand corner is no longer there, or the icon has changed. So we need to keep all of these things in mind and support and become change agents, both from a positive value, as well as change agents who are willing to take on conflict and resistance as a means of positively, positively supporting the change that's gonna come. So the discipline of change management is the area of project management that helps smooth the transition and implementation to a new product or a new system. So there are some, there are definitely a lot of false beliefs around change. You know, the idea that people want to change. Well, <laughs> notice Jack Welch says, change before you have to. Does that sound like something people want to do? No, change before you have to change. Be proactive with change. Look at how change can affect you personally, in your organization, professionally, whatever the case may be. And then Deepak Chopra is quoted as saying, all great changes are preceded by chaos. Now, if you think about this closely, what that means is we should consider embracing chaos. And what is chaos? Chaos is indeed resistance and conflict. And in certain cases, uh, like when I was doing my master's, the instructors of our course would create conflict, would make somebody responsible for not being able to take the group conscience, but instead create and challenge the group with alternatives thus creating you know, better products, better services, better ideas. If we all suddenly all agree, great, meeting done and over. But maybe we all agreed on something that was inherently wrong. So Monday morning, you know, we'll turn on the new system and they'll use it. Now that's certainly not true. Good training program you know, will help and people will just embrace. No, you know, these are all huge false beliefs. When we talk about training users, we're also marketing to those users. We need to get them on board and supportive of the system. We need to take training slow. Remember, they're used to doing a job one way, and now you're just pushing on them to do a job another. You know, people have been through a lot of change. You know, what's one more? Maybe it's that straw that broke the camel's back. You have two choices. You can either change or you're out of here. You know, now that may work on a reality TV show, but it doesn't work in successful businesses. And it certainly doesn't work on projects. You know, you, you will get folks on your project that are resistant of the change that the project that they're on the project team to make. You get the idea. Reactions to change. Now here's where we get back to emotional intelligence in the fact that if we're really focused, if we're self-aware, if we have good social skills, if we are able to show empathy both for ourselves in saying, wow, you know, change is tough. And although I support the change, it affects me. Or being able to listen to others and be empathetic on how the change or the perceived change is going to affect them. How do we regulate? That goes with that second bullet point of responding to change versus reacting to change. And then how do we motivate or manage change? So these are all very important things. You know, there's a lot of great books on change management. And if you want to be a top-notch project manager, you need to understand change management. It's not just a fact of sitting down with your project team and developing a written plan of how you're going to manage change. I was recently on a committee um, and there was conflict amongst the committee with a decision that was very, very important. In fact, affected the livelihood of someone else. And amongst our group, there was conflict. Now, how we managed that conflict was all of these people have high emotional intelligence, meaning they were willing to listen and hear and respond to others' ideas, others' opinions, um, and create a dialogue that was healthy. So there wasn't any sort of stress from, you know, 
look, it's, it's my way or the highway. There wasn't that stress, okay? Um, and realizing the importance of the issue. So dealing with people issues, you know, the soft side of technology is an area that most technology people do not enjoy. Meaning as technology, we like to be in our computer, not necessarily in a room with other people and communicating. But as my students know, I continue to challenge them and put them in a place of having to work with other people so that they can experience other people, experience other people's ideas, and in fact, create an environment for potential resistance and conflict. Because how we manage that is hugely important and how much we succeed depends our, on our success in those areas. So many technical people and manage, uh, managers Naive, naively believe that the users within the organization will gladly embrace the new system if it's built properly, if it works. Remember, go back to the idea of what kind of things do you do without thinking about them. And in a lot of cases, if you're spending eight hours a day at work, you get used to a system, you know how to do things, you're comfortable with it, and suddenly the system changes. In reality, though, some people believe that it's easier to gain compliance than it is to gain acceptance. So compliance is you will do what I need you to do when I need you to do it. Acceptance is I would like you to do it this way. Here is why. And here is the value to you and the organization if it's done this way. So it does take longer to get acceptance. But if the person is accepting of the change they're much more likely, exponentially more likely, to embrace the change and to support the change with others. Because pretty soon, if we've got a lot of people that are excited about a new project that's coming and the change it's going to create, then suddenly there's not a lot of people for people who are resistant to change to commiserate with. Something else to keep in mind, you know. So... Unfortunately, the change may not occur. A lot of times people will go back to the old way, okay, utilizing the old system if it's available to them. Uh, an example of this, when I was the IT manager for an insurance company, um, the general manager decided that we were going to put in a new system. There was no project team created. There was no process and looking at alternatives. It was the fact that our existing system provider had created a new system that was Windows-based versus DOS-based, and we were just going to put it in. Well, the first problem with it was it didn't run well. It wasn't reliable, and that affected everyone using it. But understand, the managers were in there very little pulling reports. Granted, they couldn't do that either, but there was 40 people in that organization that were using that software on a daily basis, and it was hard. It was very hard, especially going from a graphical user, in, uh, from a command line interface to a graphical user interface. They knew to press three to do this and five to do that. And now they had to click on this and click over here and do the file and drop down menu. It was very tough. And the fact was what happened was we were essentially a beta site for this. And if you know what betas are, it means there are going to be issues and there were a ton of issues with this software. And the problem was it created so much stress that we actually decided to spend the time to bring data we had put into the new system back into the old one and use the old one till we could then do a complete process to find a new system. Because the stress on the employees, see, it was the employees, not the manager who had to say to the customer, I'm sorry, our system's down. I can't give you a certificate of insurance so that you can go, you know, do your job or, you know, give you a certificate of insurance to give to a company where you're picking up a load for a semi truck. But it was the end user that had to do that and deal with the frustration of the customer who couldn't do their job because our system was down. So keep those things in mind. It really does come back to the end users or users of the system, whether it's IT or users that participate in, say, a production management process that has been changed. We don't want you to tighten the bolt this way anymore. We want you to do it this way. So there's some ideas for you. you know, and the full benefits of project are never realized or only after a great deal of time and additional expenses if 
we're not managing change. Okay, so we're going to stop right there. We'll talk about the nature of change real quick. That'll bring us back in for part two. Take care.